Nate Moore, not to be confused with Namor. That's right. Uh, <laughs> Black Panther Wakanda Forever, dude, I, I, I really enjoyed myself watching this film, and you guys did something special here, so thank you for it. Oh, thank you. Um, I like to start, I mean, this movie explores a lot of ideas of grief and mourning, and yeah. especially unexpected grief yeah. for characters in this film. Did you find yourselves being creatively influenced by real life scenarios and reflecting yeah. real life scenarios that the Black Panther Wakanda Forever follows the loss of Chadwick and you'll have to go back to work. Yeah, I mean it's it's both of those things. It's 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 losing Chad, which was a surprise for us and trying to figure out a path forward. It we, if you remember, we were also developing it in the pandemic. Yeah. And so I think collectively we were all navigating both the loss of life and the loss of human contact and the loss of all the things that sort of made us who we were. So I think a lot of that spirit is in the text of the movie and in the spirit of uh, of us coming together to make it. And, and, and in, in Wakanda Forever, a new leader emerges in Wakanda. Yes. How did you guys work together to find a new leader on set? Because I know Chad was a big leader. He was every, somebody everybody rallied around. What did you guys do to find that new leader on set together? It became more of a collective leadership, to be honest. You know, Chad was such a North Star as far as the character of T'Challa and the world of Wakanda. Um, but honestly, so is Ryan Coogler. Um, and I think when Ryan and the cast got back together for the first time, it was really about a, a collective effort to make sure that we were getting all the details right um, and supporting each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, so, so it was a bit of a different vibe, but it was a very familial vibe because we've also been through it. Yeah, a, a new character introduced here is one of my favorites from comics, Ironheart. Riri sure. is awesome, Dominic Thorne does such a good job. Yeah. And there's visually some nods to Iron Man, the flying up into the air, I'm not gonna spoil anything, <laughs> but there's some references to Iron Man 1 in there. Yeah. Did you guys try to look back at any of Tony Stark's history and say, hey, we would love to you know, nod this, but also say, we're, we're bringing in a new version. That's, what was it like to explore that? It, it was really exciting, and you, and you sort of put your finger on it. It is both a nod to Tony Stark, but its own thing. You know, mm -hmm. Riri Williams, I think probably steps less directly in Tony's footsteps as she does in publishing. But there's certainly an admiration for all the stuff you built. And even as we were crafting shots and sequences, thinking about what you'd seen in other Iron Man movies and, and sort of doing our riff on it was really fun. That, that, can you talk about the suit design? Where you guys found some inspiration for that? Yeah, it was, the, the notion was, and Ryan is such a grounded filmmaker, if someone was actually trying to build an Iron Man suit but didn't have Iron Man resources, where would mm -hmm. she go? So it is a little bit more ad hoc. Um, and he also loved the idea that, you know, Rhea used to build cards with her dad. So there's sort of a, kind of a Detroit Motor City feel yeah. to it. Uh, it's not as sleek and clean as Tony's suit. Even, you know, the trails of the suit are a little bit more gas powered. Like you get the feeling that it's like a muscle car as a suit, which we thought was interesting. And also contrasts really well with Dominique's size because she's such a small person, but such a powerful personality that the suit is kind of big and, and clunkier than Tony's suit because that's how she would have built it. Mm -hmm. I, another, the villain that we introduce. Yes. Namor. Awesome, awesome villain. One of the best MCU villains we've had. Yeah. And uh, Tanat did a great job. Can you talk about whether, you know, did you look to comics for that? How far did you want to push it with this villain? Because he's a, he's a pretty dark character in some of his choices. <laughs> he's got his motivations, and I love that. We understand him. Yeah. Uh, even if we don't agree with him. Yes. Can you talk about what you wanted that character to be in the MCU? Yeah, we thought it was really interesting both to bring a little bit of the attitude of Namor from publishing, all, yeah. who was always known as being incredibly arrogant and, and sort of uh, confident, but also to ground it in a, in a real conflict. And I think when Ryan decided to really anchor the world of Talo Khan in Mayan culture and to have Namor be uh, a little bit of the voice of the colonized, it gave him a reason for that arrogance and a reason for that attitude. And Tenoch really brings that to life uh, in a way that, that we were so impressed by. He did such a good job, yeah. man. That character is, I, I hope we get him in everything. <laughs> I, know, I know Ryan Coogler said he wanted to introduce Namor at the end of uh, Black Panther 1. Was there anybody you guys wanted to introduce at the end of Black Panther 2 that was left on the cutting room floor? Uh, not this time. You know, obviously the, the weight of this movie is a bit different and the tone of this movie is a bit different and it felt especially once people see the film, we felt the ending was so kind of poetic to then go back and say, hey, there's a there's a tag at the end, cr end credits felt a little disingenuous tonally from what they were doing. So, you know, much like Endgame didn't have a tag, this didn't feel like a movie that needed it. They, they, that's, I was going to ask you why there was no second tag. You yeah. just answered my question. <laughs> One thing about Namor, his character is pronounced both ways in this film, Namor and Namor. Uh, yeah. And I was speaking with a friend yesterday, and she was telling me that you know sometimes uh, like people come to America and their name is not pronounced that's the right. way it was when you know it was intended and given to them. Is that something you wanted to do in this film? To, to is that something about the character you wanted to convey? Yes, that that Namor, I, I would say he obviously was given that name also by 
by someone in the film. Sure. So it's not even something that, that is from him. Um, but there's certainly a way that a Spanish speaker or even a Mayan speaker would say Namor versus a way that an English speaker or somebody who is a little bit more Western and slant might say Namor. And we thought that was just interesting. I mean, it's, it's a reality that, that people face uh, and, it, and it felt it for, felt more genuine than having everybody pronounce it correctly, to be quite honest. I also find it interesting that he revealed in an interview that he's a mutant. Yes. And that means we're dealing with mutants in the MCU. <laughs> We've had our tease in Miss Marvel, now we have it in Black Panther. Yeah. I mean, I know Kevin and everybody, you know, you're all big mutant fans, sure. X-Men fans. What was it like to sit in the room with Kevin and be like, all right, hey, we're gonna do the mutant thing in this one. That, no, it was fun. I mean, you you know, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. We don't want to overpromise something that's not on the horizon. But it's, the truth is, Namor is a mutant. You know what I mean? And and as a fan of publishing and his history, it felt again, it would have felt disingenuous to not say that. It's fun to leave these breadcrumbs and sort of see where they go. Um, and Tenoch is clearly very excited about it, which which is great. You know, part of I think the fun of making these movies is seeing how the cast really embrace their characters and 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 allowing them to have that excitement and really yeah. live in it. Oh yeah, he may, he's good. Uh, yeah. the, the movie's two hours forty one minutes yes. long. The previous two MCU films were both two hours long, when they felt a little bit fast to me. Sure. And this one got a little extra runtime, which sure. was really cool. Did, did you? What is the conversation like when you're deciding the runtime of the film? Because this one, I think, benefited from having the extra time. Yeah, and it's. I mean, there's probably less of a hard and fast rule than you might think. It really is how much story is there to tell, and and how compelling is it? There is a lot going on in this movie. It, you know, there is an epic quality to the story that Ryan wanted to tell, and an epic quality to the journeys of these characters. So we didn't want to. Uh, we didn't want to shortchange anything. This movie could have been longer. There are some fantastic scenes that aren't in the film that just felt like they they weren't driving the the general narrative forward. Um, but we have such a great cast of characters. I mean, yeah. all, all of their scenes are great. So it is hard sometimes to make the choices, even to get it to where it was. The performances in this one. Is yeah. there a lot of deleted scenes that you think we'll get one day? I think there are some. I think okay. there are some. All right, that's fair. Uh, there, there were rumors online. One of the hottest rumors going into this one was that Doom was going to show up. <laughs> I have to ask, was that ever a consideration? It, it wasn't, to be quite honest. Although I, I get why. Sure. And, and he's such a great character in the world of Latveria. is so fantastic. And Ryan is a fan. Um, but once we decided Namor was the antagonist, that was always going to be the focus. That's fair. And I, it, it was a good focus. Yeah. Uh, your next project after this one is Captain America New World Order. Yes. We've talked about Sam Wilson's journey in a previous interview yes. on Phase Zero. I appreciate yes. you coming on. Uh, Harrison Ford is now the big news of that one. Yes. Are you actually going to turn Han Solo into Red Hulk? I mean, I think you're going to have to wait and see. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but Harrison Ford, we couldn't be more excited. Uh, Obviously, when you have Han Solo or Indiana Jones involved in your movie, uh, it just raises the game. So uh, we're excited to see Mackie and, and, and Harrison Ford in scenes together. I think it's going to be fantastic. Okay, my last question for you, as an Eternals producer, you yes. think we'll see them again anytime soon, Eternals 2? Uh, I, I, I would... Uh, I, th I don't want to spoil anything, but uh, we have not seen the last of those characters. I dig it, man. Dude, congratulations on Wakanda Forever. Thank you for this movie, and I can't wait to see it again with fans on opening night.